Hi, my name is Matt, and a few months ago I made a video showing you how I made this. Now if you haven't seen that video, this is a very basic carbide tool using just basic inserts and things that you can get from Home Depot and Harbor Freight, and it shows you how I made this for about $25. Now, while this works pretty good if you don't have a set of tools, it really cannot stand a candle to just a basic, good carbide insert tool. So, I noticed on Amazon the other day that you can buy these basic inserts with a screw and everything for about $7, or if you're buying in bulk, for as little as $3 an insert. Which got me thinking, what's the cheapest, high quality carbide tool that we can actually make? To start this out, I got some round steel stock from Home Depot. The one that I used was just basic steel, and I got a 48 inch length of it for about $9.21 after taxes. We can easily make three tools out of this piece of steel, which breaks it down to about $3 per tool. Next is the inserts. You can find a single insert on Amazon for about $7 with a screw, or you can get a pack of 10 of them for around $35. Mine was about $41 breaking down to about $4 per insert. Next I need some material for the handle. I just used some scrap mesquite firewood that I had lying around. After this, you also need some tools that I'm going to use. Now, I'm using a cheap Harbor Freight angle grinder, a drill, a basic tap and die, and some two-part epoxy. Now, if you don't want to use the drill, you can easily get away with using a hacksaw and a file. It's just going to suck. To start out, we're going to lay out how we want to break up this rod of steel. Now this is a 48 inch rod of steel, which means you can easily break it down into 4 sections of 12 inches or 3 sections of 16 inches. Now I wanted to make a lathe tool that was capable of being scaled up for larger lathes in the future, which means I ended up using about 20 inches of this rod. Once I have the layout done, I need to start cutting down the steel rod. and I want to mark up the part that's going to go into the handle to make it bond better with the epoxy. I tried doing this with this file and realized how slow and painful it was going to be, so I switched back to my angle grinder and made short work of this part. The next step is to create a flat side that can rest on our tool rest. This will really help position the lathe tool so it's cutting correctly whenever you're holding it. It also helps for a second handle that I end up putting on here to really screw down and tighten in. Now, I first tried to even this out with a file and realized how miserable that would be. So I switched over to my orbital sander and evened this out really well with some 80 grit sandpaper. Now I need to mark out the part for the actual insert, and to do that I'm just using my angle grinder again, cutting out a small portion that will fit in my insert, and then I'm trying to clean up the edges like you see here. I'm trying to make sure to taper these edges down as well, that way the edges don't get in the way of the actual turning wood, and I can get the full use out of my insert. You can kind of think of this like a bowl gouge. Now I do some of the cleanup work here with a file, and then I just have to start drilling the hole that will be tapered for the screw. Now I'm using two different sized drill bits to finally tune in onto what I want. And to help me get a good set, I even drill a little bit larger just for the start bit, so I can really, really get a good tap in for the further down threads. And I'm making sure to turn back every couple of turns to break any chips that I'm making from these threads. Once I have it mostly done, I can just twirl it up really well and clean up the top with the file. Once I get a test fit fitting really well, I clean up 
the bottom of the tool to make sure that there's no excess screw sticking out. Once I have the tool ready, I can start using it to actually make the handle. Now I ended up using a more rectangular stock, so that way I would have a little piece that wasn't completely round. And I can use that to help register where I am on the tool. Now, as for the actual shape of the lathe tool, I would just go with something that feels comfortable in the hand, gives a couple of ridges for you to hold down on. Now, just sand it up really well. And whenever you feel that it's comfortable to hold, start applying your finish. I'm just using a boiled linseed oil. Now I just need to start removing it from the lathe. For my lathe tools, I like having a second handle that rides up and down the length of the tool. This really helps me to choke up onto the lathe tool whenever I'm turning smaller objects or bigger objects and to adjust the tool for whatever I'm turning. And that's what you're seeing me do here. Now for this, I just drilled out the inside so that way it can slide down the length of the tool. and I've drilled a couple of holes so I can put in some set screws. And to do that, I just used some brass inserts and epoxied them in for each one. Once I had the brass inserts done and well put in, I could switch to the other one. Once I make sure that the set screw isn't in the hole, I can re-drill the hole to make sure that it's clear and ready for the tool. Then I can just turn away the excess brass as the brass easily gets shaved away with my carbide tools. It makes the handle feel really smooth. Once I'm done applying a finish of oil linseed oil, I can part it off and clean it off with some sandpaper. Now to stick the tool inside the actual handle, I'm just using some basic two-part JB Weld epoxy and trying to really set it in very well to hold it up. Now you really could just use any two-part epoxy. I like using JB Weld because I find that it holds really well. So here we are. Now, you guys probably haven't seen a whole lot of uh, lathe tools that have this. What I like having this here for is that I can use this to really just set at a point closer to where I'm actually working and just really choke up really well on this lathe tool. Now, I still need to let this uh, epoxy set, so I'm not gonna do a whole lot of pictures right now. And a couple of notes that I would have made uh, a previous slave tool that I had made was this one, and this is what really kind of gave me the idea. Now for this, I used a different type of steel. Uh, I used a steel that has some alloys in it that makes it not rust. This one, I could not find that steel at Home Depot. So if you're doing this for yourself, I would highly recommend spending the extra couple of dollars, get the nicer steel, it's going to look a lot better just for the future. Uh, we're gonna have to put some stuff on this to try and make sure that it doesn't rust up on me, but it should still look perfectly fine. Uh, all in all, these are some 
nice looking lathe tools, really, really cheap, really work well. I hope you guys enjoyed and have a great day. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and have a wonderful day.